Hey YouTube, I'm Jacob Beach with the Preppers Bunker Outdoors and today I'm here to talk to you about EJ Snyder's Top Skull Crusher SXB. Oh, get some! All right, guys, so the uh, fan sent this in to me. I'm very appreciative of him. Uh, this is an initial review, so I'm going to start putting this knife up against some other popular knives of different price ranges. But uh, I wanted to talk to you about my first impressions of the blade itself. Um, first off, I have to automatically say that I like it more than most tops. It sees a few of the same downfalls, in my opinion, that a lot of Topps knives suffers from. Uh, it does have a little bit higher primary grind than what is normal. Uh, that's good. Still quite a thick uh, bevel there, um, but maybe maybe thinner than what's normal. I don't know. Um, some very funky handle geometry. I'll talk about that later. And the classic and nearly totally useless saw. Let's take a closer look at each of these things. Tops is well known for having shallow bevels and thick edges. This can make a knife relatively tough regardless of steel, but it also makes it difficult for the knife to cut well, which should be its first priority. A lot of people call this knife a Topps Tracker on steroids. Aesthetically, of course, I can see that, but this knife, I think, performs quite a bit better, in my opinion, than the Topps Tracker in every category for a few key reasons. One of those reasons is this handle. The handle is very long and allows multiple grip positions, so I can grip it down here for my chopping, or I can choke up for my finer work. There are, in my opinion, some downfalls to this design. No matter how close I get my index finger up to the edge, it's still a good distance away from the beginning of the edge, which makes fine work a lot more difficult. The closer you get the edge to your lead finger, the more control you have over the blade. Also, when the hand is in this position, I want to choke up past the ramp, which puts my thumb directly onto the saw. That's just not going to work. These serrations here are quite interesting. I've never seen a handle with geometry quite like this, and I have a feeling that the knife was probably designed to fit E.J. Snyder's hand perfectly. But for me, it just doesn't, just doesn't do it quite as well as it might for him. But the long handle is still very nice. The Rocky Mountain tread pattern that Topps does is not as bad as it used to be. The edges are more rounded and not nearly as sharp as they used to be. And it has a couple of bow drill divots, although at the moment I'm thinking that they're placed too far either end of the scale. Of course, the end comes to the skull crusher point. Although I don't know how useful or actually practical that's going to be, we'll just have to see. All in all, the handle is quite a bit better than the tracker design, but it also still does suffer from top square edges. They don't do a lot of shaping on these handles. With the blade, as I mentioned before, this saw, I think, not only is useless, but also gets in the way of a comfortable grip for me. And like I said before, the bevel is just too shallow, making a nice thick edge. 
What I will say is nice about this knife, again, as compared to the tracker, is that the extra length not only gives you more belly that's actually usable and a nice large sweet spot for chopping, but in this design iteration, it brings this grind and this edge up closer to the level of your finger, as you see here. Whereas many large knives, if the edge were straight, the edge would come down to here, which again, reduces the amount of leverage that you have on the knife and your ability to do fine work with the knife. All right, so I want to reiterate that this is a first impressions uh, video. So I'm not gonna get really in depth into any topic because I have not put the time behind the blade to give you exactly how it works in the real world. These are just what I've gathered from quickly handling the blade. I've had it for a little while. I had to touch up the edge and I will say that it took an edge back better than I had expected, rather quickly actually, and it has quite a good edge on it now. So in the next coming few weeks, not only will I be testing the heck out of this knife, but you're gonna see it being compared to some other popular knives to include the BK9, the Jessica X, the Topps Kukri, and maybe even a couple others. It just depends on what I get requests for. And I'm getting a lot of requests. So stay tuned. This knife is gonna basically have its own series of comparisons and we're gonna see how it matches up. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe and stick around to see what else we can do to this knife.